Hello, this is Roman Gabriel, and you are listening to The Grilling Truth. Welcome, everybody, to The Grilling Truth NFL Legends Show, brought to you by Grid Armo, an interactive football app, where you get to call what you think the offense or defense should do during a live NFL game and see what all other fans have called also. Check out Grid Armo at www.gridarmo.com. I'm your host for The Legend Show, Mike Goodpaster, and I want to welcome in today uh, my guest, better known as the singing safety, Jeff Severson. <laughs> How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, Mike, and thanks for uh, uh, checking in with me on this. It's it's fun thing to do, and I, I've been listening to a couple of your shows, and I think for the listener, this is great for, for people that want to get some history of the NFL players and what, what their life was like uh, during and after and, and, and their impression of the game of pro football from their personal aspects. I, congratulations. I think it's a great show. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so l- let's start off here. Where did you get the nickname, or when did you get it, the singing safety? Well, you know, coming from North Dakota in 57, a, night, a tornado blew us to California, and when I started playing professional ball, I was doing a, some commercials up in um, in Houston, and uh, this DJ nicknamed me the Singing Safety. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of corny, but it, you know Jeff Severson, the Singing Safety, it's kind of a cute thing. So some worst thing you could be called Jeff. That's right, and I have been too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's been. what I hear, but we won't bring that up today. There you um, go. So let's just start. When did you first start playing football? I mean, what drew you to the game? Um, well, what were your big influences when you were younger? Yeah. When we came to uh, California, of course, I, we'd play football, basketball, baseball, and I, I love sports, and, was, and I, I think I took to football because I like the, I liked the, uh, the contact, you know, I like to hit. And I uh, went to Wilson High School. We had a great team there. We uh, uh, Dennis Stemmett, that went on to UCLA, was our quarterback, and Bobby Gritch, who went on to play baseball. So a lot of great athletes came out of Southern California, and, and we had – a uh, real good high school team, of course, Poly High School, that's had uh, all the great pro athletes, Willie McGinnis and and on and on and on, uh, was our big rivalry. And we beat them all three years that I was there. And then I, after high school, Mike, I didn't um, – I was an undersized linebacker, and I went out for football at Long Beach City College. I said, oh, you're too small to play, you know, 185 pounds linebacker. And – I said, well, I'm going out, and I, they didn't even think I'd make the team, and I'm in bull in the ring with Carl Weathers, who was Apollo Creed, and they go, all right, you're tough, but we're going to move you to the secondary in the defensive backfield. So we had two great years there, and then a scholarship to Long Beach State followed, uh, and we had a great championship team there. The, the great story about that team was uh, the fact that we had got a – fellow by the name of Leon Burns that had been in prison for five years and he became an All-American running back. And uh, I've been trying to tell this story. We had four practices a day at Terminal Island, and that team eventually uh, won the championship and beat uh, Don Coriel's best team ever in 70 the, with Brian Seip and, and uh, Don Coriel and Joe Gibbs. And so good good football background in, in this city and, and, and the West Coast guys, uh, and, and it was a great uh, great victory for Long Beach State beating uh, San Diego State when they were uh, the 50,000 people at Anaheim Stadium all saying, bring on Ohio State, you know, and we beat them decisively, I think 28 to 10, something like that. Yeah, I think people forget all the great players that came out of Long Beach State, San Diego State. I mean, you had Don Coriel there. At one point, his assistant coaches were John Madden and Joe Gibbs, Ernie Zampezi. I mean, it was really some great college football back then. Uh, when did you first realize that you were good enough to possibly play in the NFL? You know, my junior year, Mike, I uh, – I was playing strong safety, and then they moved me to corner. They moved me to second-string cornerback, and I was covering a, a guy by the name of Billy Parks, who was an All-American that went on to play about uh, eight, nine years in the NFL, drafted by San Diego. And so I'm playing him one-on-one and, and knocking the hell out of him, and then they go, all right, Jeff, you're going to be the starting corner, you know, which is man-to-man coverage. 
And I met a coach there named Ernie Johnson that kind of changed my life. He was a great, great uh, high school coach at El Rancho, and then we had him at Long Beach State. And he wanted all of his players, Mike, to be the best that they can be. And I, I tell young people to this day, I said, what? Strive to be the best you can be because you can't be any more than the best that you can be. And he had great values. He taught great character. And I, he, he changed my life. And, and that year I, I tied the NC2A record with 15 interceptions. I mean, I think uh, three were against Brian Seip, two were against Pastorini. So it wasn't just uh, garbage stuff. It was a couple – pro quarterbacks that uh, had about five and Dennis Shaw I got two from Dennis Shaw so that went on to play for Buffalo so it was a it was an exciting time I think five of them stuck in my face mask but uh, we we led the nation I think in interceptions and uh, that uh, experience with Ernie Johnson and then of course the the hard work we put in Jim Stangland had come from USC and uh we knew that he would be a success at Long Beach, and that's why we went there. And we eventually won the championship and went on to play in a bowl game against Louisville with course, uh, Lee Corso as the coach, and, of course, Tommy Jackson was the linebacker on that team. All right, so before we get to your NFL career, we're going to go ahead and show people a little bit of why they call you to singing safety. Um, you want to <laughs> give an intro for packing out of Texas? Sure. Yeah, I've, I've always played the guitar since I was a little guy, and, and uh, I, of course, I love country music. I like what it, the West stands for and, and the image of the uh, American cowboy, and I do a lot of horseback riding and, and love that whole thing. So the the Western uh, theme, the dress, the, the coat of the West is all very important to me to keep it going. And so as I w- would write songs over the years, I'd put them together and then we put this cd out last year and this is kind of a uh, i think it's a it's a good song it's called packing out of texas about a relationship that a, a, a cowboy that works at this ranch has and and, and the, the 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 boss man didn't treat his wife very good and beat her and all that stuff so he he engages in a relationship and this is called packing out of texas it's got great fiddle to it so i hope you enjoy it All right, guys, this is Jeff Severson with Packing Out of Texas. I'm packing out of Texas With the only horse that I own I'm riding hard and fast I gotta make old Mexico Yeah, I gotta make tracks He's on my back I love his wife Now he wants my life I was a top hand at the free bar I used to break the young colts and boss man's wife, Miss Julie Well, he beat her like them colts that I broke Now I gotta make tracks He's on my back I love his wife Now he wants my life It all happened in the springtime Down by the Pecos We made love by that river Neath the tall bend of the willow Now I gotta make tracks He's on my back I love his wife Now he wants my life I gotta turn this horse around She's the only love I'll ever know But now I'm facing his posse And I pull my gun a little slow Then I heard a rifle crack She shot him in the back She 
save my life Now she'll be my wife All right, we're back with former Washington Redskin defensive back Jeff Severson. Um, Jeff, let's go on to draft day, 1972. What was that like <laughs> for you? Or 1971, I believe it was. 71, yeah. Yeah, tell us a little bit of the difference between now and today and how you found out you were going to be a Washington Redskin. Well, in the in the two years at Long Beach State, I had 23 interceptions, which is like unheard of anymore. Uh, you know, like I said, that uh, it was we were a lot of passing in that league. So, And we played the ball a lot. Uh, whereas more of the, the, the players now are, are just, they're running with a guy. And, and so that got the attention of some of the scouts. And, uh, you know, I was finally getting looked at. It wasn't sophistic, as sophisticated as it is now with the combine and all those things. So uh, I know Bobby Bethard, you know, I caught his eye and, and uh, uh, some other teams, but it wasn't sophisticated. In fact, a funny story is my attorney, Don Dyer, we sent out a letter to all the clubs and said, here we got a guy that runs a 4-6-40, had 23 interceptions, and uh, blah, blah, blah. And then I got letters back saying, we're not, we're not accepting any free agents. Well, those teams weren't sophisticated enough to know that I'd already been drafted by the Redskins. And that came about because right across the street was, uh, from our high school was Blair Field, where the L.A. Rams practiced. And they had great teams in the late 60s, Roman Gabriel and and Merlin Olson and Deacon Jones and Patios and Pardee and Pettibone and Talbert and all those guys, they were uh, right across the street. So I got to say hi to them. And, of course, Roman Gabriel, which I think we're going to play one of his songs a little bit later that I wrote about him, a great gentleman and, and, and always treated everybody with uh, respect, and, and he never put himself above anybody else. That was, I think was a great uh, quality of Romans. But George Allen... Uh, knew that I had the 23 interceptions, and he, Lombardi had died, uh, and and George Allen got the job with the Redskins, leaving the Rams, and of course he brought all those players with him. So uh, it was it was a, a great thrill to be drafted by them in the 12th round because he had traded away most of the draft choices. The tough thing, Mike, is you know that George Allen wasn't a big fan of rookies so it was a real challenge to uh to make that ball club yeah and when you get to the redskins you get the over the hill gang jack party guys like that um what was that training camp like for you and how did the veterans treat you oh god well i had never been east of the mississippi so we we go to washington dc and we have training camp in, in carlisle and george the, the redskins had 40 some players from the year before, George Allen traded for 17 veterans. So here's here's 60 guys in training camp that are veterans, and then uh, we had a half dozen draft choices because George had traded most of the draft choices away. And of course, him him not being a, 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 a him liking veteran players, it was a real challenge to make that club. But the great thing about that, the, the players from the Rams, they call them the Ramskins. And eventually the Over the Hill Gang was, uh, you know, I had a connection there with Coach Allen coming from Southern Cal and all those nine players or seven players from the Rams that got traded to the Redskins. So they kind of took me under their wing and and uh, were very unselfish about, uh, you know, teaching me the ropes of the nuances of the pro game. And, and so... Training camp was just brutal. I mean, I was the first guy in the field and the last guy to leave every day, and I just persisted and persisted and, and, and uh, you know, made the ball club. And, of course, our, uh, in 72, we had that uh, we, we had a, two great championship games against uh, Green Bay. They only scored a field goal, and, and then, of course, we beat the Cowboys decisively. They only scored a field goal leading up to Super Bowl Seven. All right, now you, you talked a little bit about George Allen, one of the greatest defensive minds to ever coach football, special teams also. What was your relationship like with Coach Allen? Well, I tell you what, I, I bet you know 99% of all the players would say the same thing. When you had a conversation with Coach Allen, and he was, he was you know, he 
he loved his players. He was a, a player's coach in many aspects. You would never talk to him about anything.